What's up, YouTube? Today, I have a really interesting conversation and or debate, depending on how you want to look at it. Today, we're going to be taking a look at which class is or could be the best or even OP in Trials of Osiris. A lot of people seem to think that Hunters, either Golden Gun or especially Blade Dancers, will be OP. Others think Warlocks and very few people will even say Titans, and I mean very, very few. All of which I find a little bit weird. Now, in Trials of Osiris, gear will matter. It's basically the skirmish version of Iron Banner, so gear and level definitely matters. But we're not really going to get into that today. So, which is it? Hunter, Titan, or Warlock? Well, surprisingly, none of the above. See, Bungie did an excellent job of balancing each class, and it makes it impossible to say that one is better than the other. In my opinion, at least. But, let's break it down per class. Let's start with Titans, since they aren't getting much love for Trials of Osiris. The Titan's role isn't that of, say, an action hero. He needs to be more of a clutch or medic guy. Using the Ward of Dawn, or the Bubble, to either absorb Golden Gunfire up to two shots, or absorbing Nova Bombs, is probably going to be, I guess, the most effective use of the Bubble. The Bubble is also a great tool for reviving teammates. Say, if two go down to a Nova Bomb or a Golden Gun, pop a Bubble, and you're more than likely going to be safe for at least a Clutch Revive. This is also a great tool if the match is going to overtime and you have to capture the hard point area. I assume it's a hard point, I forget what they actually call it, but we'll say it's a hard point area. As far as Fist of Havoc goes, I really don't see much of a need for it. It's too, well, hit or miss, I guess. Plus, if you use it on just one person, you're really not doing your team a favor. Now, for Warlocks. It gets interesting here because you have Nova Bomb which if used right can be devastating but you also have Self Res. Now I don't have a Warlock personally but from what I do know from my Warlock friends Self Res is much more viable than Nova Bomb. Self Res is the clutch medic for Warlocks and is a massive help to your team. I believe there is a piece of Warlock gear that when you self-res, it blinds nearby enemies, which is probably going to be a massive advantage for self-resing Warlocks, especially in Trials of Osiris. So definitely keep an eye on that if you're going up against some Warlocks. Now, for the Hunters. Yes, the Hunters. Arguably the best class. In my opinion, I'm a hunter, hunter master race, but putting my personal feelings aside for just a few minutes, we have two options here, Blade Dancer and Golden Gun. This is honestly a really tough call because both are super deadly. I personally think Golden Gun is the better choice with a better chance to wipe the enemy team out than Blade Dancer. Now, we argued about this on the podcast last Sunday as to whether which class is, you know, OP or whatever, and everybody on the podcast kind of agreed, except for me, that Blade Dancer was going to be the OP class slash subclass. I don't agree with that, but we'll get into that here in a second. With Blade Dancer, they all have to be kind of close so you can strike fast. <clears throat> if they aren't, you risk dying as well, and that doesn't help your team. With Golden Gun, and especially if you're using the Symbiote Helmet, which gives you four Golden Gun shots, you have four shots to hit three people. And if they're smart, they will likely kind of stay together, so if you're an experienced Golden Gunner, you should be able to hit all three pretty fast. Now, I know I literally just said that they stick together, and with Blade Dancer, they have to be together. But the problem that, that I see with Blade Dancer is 
if they know you're coming, because it's a melee attack, I just don't trust it enough. I know I know it works in regular PvP, but I th I would think that people would be prepared for it. And you know, say if the first person that you take down is a self rezzing warlock, well, he goes down, he immediately rezzes, and then you, your blade dancer is blind, and guess what? He's dead. Basically, that's how I see it. So, but anyways, getting back on topic. I think that staying back versus having to get melee range is the much safer option of the two. If you get caught as a blade dancer, they basically own your soul, but if you get caught as a golden gun, there's a better chance for a revive. And that's what I think you should be thinking about first. Now, we could go into what the best team setup is, and this debate could literally go on forever. Two hunters and a warlock, one of each, two locks, three hunters. I mean, the possibilities are truly, well, they're not endless because there's only three and you can only have X amount of setups. But I couldn't figure the best team, honestly. Each class has its very specific role inside Trials of Osiris. Just remember that whatever you decide, make sure that you're also thinking about revives and how your actions will affect your team. I know on the podcast we talked about, um, we kind of touched on this, I'm going to say we really talked about it because we didn't, but I think the general consensus for our group was a lock and two hunters and one blade dancer, one golden gun. Um, I think that's a, a pretty good setup, I'm not going to lie, but again, it really depends on your skills if you're a shitty you know, blade dancer. I wouldn't suggest being a blade dancer because it's really going to depend on how well you can use that super to your advantage. So I really take those things into consideration and just make sure that you use the best class to you know to your advantage. And if you're a fist of havoc warlock, that's what you know. That's what you're good at. And then rock it. I, I mean, good luck. But in reality. It's it's going to be more about gun skill than super abilities. I mean, supers won't likely be charged until mid to late rounds anyway. But also, it's really in your team's best interest to coordinate super usage to either orb feed or attempt late round wrecking. And what I mean here is make sure if you guys get your super, say you get your supers in the fifth round, don't all go ham on supers in the fifth and sixth round. I would suggest using, say, player A uses his super in the fifth round, player B uses his super in the sixth round, and player C uses theirs in the sixth or seventh round. However, I forget honestly how many rounds there are. There might only be five, I, I forget. But, um, but basically, use your supers in the late rounds because if you use just one super, then you can assume that, I don't want to say that you could assume because you really can't, but I, I just really think using one super per round would almost guarantee you each round versus two people using a super or even three people using a super because there's only three players. So uh, definitely coordinate that with your team. And that's something that we're, we're working on now. So I just figured I'd share that with you guys. But let me know what class you'll be running. And as always, until next time.